The headlines. Shikarao defects to PDP after three months in NMPP. Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, declares indefinite strike. Court dismisses federal government's application to extradite Kiari to the United States. And on the forums in EU calls for release of Palestinian hunger striker. Hello and welcome to news update on Trust Television. I am Nten Ekman. And now the news in full. Former Governor of Kanu State, Ibrahim Shekarao, has formally announced his defection from the new Nigeria People's Party, the NMPP, to the People's Democratic Party, PDP. This is coming barely three months after Shekarao defected to NMPP from the All Progressives Congress, the APC. Shekarao made the declaration on Monday at his home in Kanu. He was formally received into the PDP by the party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, and the party's national chairman. Senator Iocha, are you among other big wigs? Shikarao also said he had written to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to announce his withdrawal from the senatorial race for Kano Central under the NNPP. Prominent PDP members at the event include former Vice President Namadi Sambo, the party's BOT chairman Walid Jibrin, former Jigawa State Governor Sule Lamido, and Senator Dino Melai. PDP faithful defied the downpour to witness the event in the commercial city. <laughs> Former President Lucia Gunoba Sonja says he does not have a preferred presidential candidate for the 2023 elections, but a national agenda. Obasanjo made this known in Mino, Niger State, after having closed door separate meetings with former military president General Ibrahim Babangida and Abdul Salami Abubakar at their uphill residence. He said, as an elder statement, he has no anointed presidential candidate or a preferred political party, but an agenda for the country. Obasanjo had a different fora, had consultations with Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi or Progressive Congress presidential candidate Asiwa Jubola met Tinubu and other prominent Nigerians from different political parties. Members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, on Monday declared an indefinite strike. The academics made this resolution known during their National Executive Council meeting, which began at about 12.15 a.m. at the University of Abuja. The Senate Committee on Special Duties has advocated for more support to strengthen the capacity and operations of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to manage the increasing spate of disasters in the country. The committee made the recommendation when its members visited the agency on an oversight visit. The recommendation was contained in a statement where the chairman of the committee, Yusuf Yusuf, said the increasing incidents and complexity of disasters required efficient response which could only be achieved achieved with proper investment in disaster management, adding that efforts must be geared towards early preparation with proper funding and equipping for proactive response to save lives and property. I Meanwhile, heavy rainfall has rendered hundreds of people living in Kanaya village in Jigawa State homeless has flood washed away more than half of the houses. The Executive Secretary, Jigawa State Emergency Management Agency, Yusuf Sani, who confirmed the incident, said the entire village has been ravaged and they are working on providing shelter and food for the victims. The flood, which started around 6 p.m. Saturday evening, kept the entire village awake to Sunday evening, forcing villagers to seek refuge at the village school buildings. Kanaya is a few kilometers away from Dutse, the Jigawa state capital. Terrorists operating around Jibia, Batsari and Safana Axis in Kasine State were coming under, are coming under heavy military attacks, forcing them to change tactics and positions. The terrorists are moving towards Funtoa, Bakori and Danja Axis that were he thought to peaceful. Abdullah Yamadi has an update on some recent terrorist attacks in Kasine State. Kidnappers in their hundreds 
stormed Bakwari Saturday night and abducted seven members of the family of one Montari Manajang Samaru. Although the terrorists were pursued by members of the vigilante and some soldiers, they managed to escape with their victims. And uh, three days ago, on Friday to be precise, they killed one person and abducted seven at very, very village of Danja local government area. But three of the victims managed to escape unhurt. While hiding in a farm in the evening of that fateful day before they struck very, very village, a full woman who stumbled on them was said to have been gang raped to death. Similarly, about three days ago, the bandits invaded Kurami village of Bakwari local government about six kilometers from Bakwari on Bakwari Funtua Road. Here, they went away with three children, and uh, on that same day, they released another victim from the same village who was uh, kidnapped twice. Before then, the terrorists invaded a small Fulani settlement just outside Bakwari town, killing two people according to accounts. But another interesting story just coming in is that three out of the seven abducted persons uh, from the family of Montari, Marajan Samuru, had been released. Those released uh, Montari's wife together with her twin children. According to Montari's wife, Fatima, the kidnappers had no choice but to release her when they realized that she reached a point where she could no longer walk after working for hours in the rain and crossing about five rivers along the way. She, however, left behind two of her children, two girls and a boy who are still with the kidnappers. So this is the second time the bandits are attacking Bakori town in one year. The first one was when they abducted the former NBC director, Ahmed Abdelkader, and his daughter, Leila. And why am I there? The newly posted commissioner, please, Kolo Yusuf, has assumed duty as the 32nd commissioner of police in Zamfara State. The newly posted commissioner of police in that state has assured residents of the state of unalloyed commitment to protection of lives and property of the citizen. A statement by the Police Command Public Relations Officer Mohamed Sheo said the Commissioner of Police who resumed uh, the command on Monday, August 29, is seeking support and collaboration of the people to tackle crimes and criminality in the state. He warned all criminal elements to renounce their criminal activities and repent or face their consequences. The intelligence response team IRT of the Nigerian police force has arrested three informants of a kidnap for ransom syndicate who kidnapped the wife and two children of a seven lawmaker in Katsina State. Police spokesperson Olumuiwa Hadejobi made this known in a statement made available to newsmen. According to the statement, the police response intelligence team acted on reports on the activities of the deadly criminal gangs by RRT operatives. The three key suspects who confessed to the crime were said to have supplied information that led to the assault on the lawmaker and abduction of his family. There was tension at the Kuje Correctional Center as inmates early Monday protested the death of their colleague. The unrest was triggered following the death of the inmate who was allegedly not given prompt medical attention. Meanwhile, some inmates attempted to escape from the facility and meet the tension but were prevented by the warders. Officials of the prison confirmed the death of the inmate. You're watching News Update on Trust Television. Coming up after the break, are wall clocks and wristwatches going extinct? Answers when we come back, please do stay with us.
documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back, and if you're just joining us, you're watching News Update on Trust Television, a recap of our major stories. Shakarao defects to PDP after three months in NMPP. And Academic Star Union of Universities declares an indefinite strike. And moving to other stories now, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has dismissed a suit filed by the federal government seeking the extradition of a suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP Abakiari, to the United States for trial in an alleged internet fraud. The trial judge, Justice Iyangako, while delivering his judgment on Monday, said the dismissal is due to a pending court case filed by the Attorney General of the Federation, Abuba Kamalami, and the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA. Justice Iyangako submitted that Section 3 of Nigeria's extradition law forbids the country to extradite a criminal when there is a pending case against them. He therefore ruled that the suit was brought in bad faith and was therefore dismissed. Fire has gutted a gas plant near the redemption camp at Moe bus stop in the Obafemi Owode local government area of Ogun State. Police spokesperson for the Lagos spokesperson for the Lagos Emergency Management Agency, Nosa Okumba, confirmed the incident. Reports say the explosion caused panic in the area as residents and workers at the various institutions within the area ran to keep safe. The fire started around 10.30 a.m. as the plant exploded close to the redemption camp and around the police station situated at the camp. The Kogi state government, through the Ministry of Solid Minerals and Natural Resources, has directed the total stoppage of illegal mining in the state. A statement signed by the Kogi State Commissioner for Solid Minerals and Natural Resources, Bashiru Gegu, stated that all legal operators should henceforth register with the Ministry of Solid Minerals and Natural Resources to enhance peace and criminal-free sites. The directives followed the death of two persons in an illegal mining site after it collapsed on Saturday, 23rd August, in Ankba local government area. The statement said failure to adhere to the directive, the state government will close down the airing mining operators and sites. Now, the evolution of mobile phones, otherwise known as GSM handsets, in the early 21st century has redefined the existence of life and some basic tools people use, such as wall clocks, wristwatches, and yearly printed calendars. In this report, Trans TV's Shafiu Suleiman examines usage of these tools regarded as essentials in day-to-day -day life and the role of technology in sending them to their early graves and how people cope without them. The report. A mobile phone, cellular phone, cell phone, hand phone is a portable telephone that can make and receive calls over a radio frequency link while the user is moving within a telephone service area. However, this mobile device, first developed in 1973 by Martin Cooper of Motorola in New York, has now changed the world in many ways. For instance, prior to its evolution, wall clock and printed yearly calendars are a common feature in our homes and offices. But now the story has changed. It is already being programmed 
just when you look your phone, you will see that, you will see time, you know. So this is what you are, what uh, phone, yes, it's what we are using with phone. So you can manage phone, no need to get, uh, you know, some, uh, watch, yes. Right now, once I, I want to know the exact date or the time I want to do, I'm, I, will, I go through to my phone instantly, I'm satisfied because you, you have to show me instantly, I will get to know the time and the date and what I'm, I wanted to do. So I've taken that burden away, I've taken that uh, stress away from me. This life-changing device, which also has its negative impact on the people's life, is rendering other devices and human services redundant. It's true that many mobile phone users prefer using their devices to check time and dates instead of buying a wristwatch. Economically, it save money. Instead to now, for instance, you have to buy two things, you will go buy just for fun, because it will soft, it will serve you the same thing with watch. Before people, when you, when you have an occasion, you have to have occasion running head scatter, trying to make a camera, buy a video camera, no matter how much you want to, but right now you are with your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your occasion is going to give you whatever you want. While the society grapples with notable negativities of these technology, such as growing moral imbalance, cyber-related crimes, amongst others, it has equally made life easier for many. In some cases reducing the burden of acquiring multiple domestic and electronic tools. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. Amidst the current economic hardship triggered by inflation in the country, pensioners are among the set of people that are mostly affected. And Trust TV speaks to a 66-year-old retired civil servant on the effect of the current economic realities. Ibrahim Ismail reports. Muhammad Ali Ukorau is a 66-year-old. He retired from the local education authority in Gombe State after 35 years of service, but is yet to receive his gratuity. Korau said life has been difficult as a retiree. <laughs> I suffered a lot when I reached my retirement. They stopped my salary and my pension was not coming. I struggled for one year, six months. I resorted to begging to cater for my family. There is delay in the payment of pension. The pension used to delay for three to four months, pushing me to collecting loans. One will be wondering whether to repay the loan or buy food. Coral said the plight of pensioners will affect productivity of civil servants who are still in service and not the authorities to cater for the welfare of pensioners who gave their best to public service at their prime. Non-payment of gratuity, pension and other benefits will discourage civil servants and make them to be thinking of what will happen to them. That is why others loot billions. A person will loot money that can pay millions of workers. In 2019, Governor Muhammadu Inwa Yahya of Gombe State paid the sum of 1.097 billion naira to settle outstanding gratuity for retirees under the state civil service. Similarly, at the beginning of the year 2022, the Gombe State government paid 755 million naira for the payment of the second trench of the backlog of gratuity or to 2015 retirees in the state. The Inwaya administration said it inherited over 14 billion naira backlog of pension and gratuities for the state and local government retirees when it came to power in 2019. This, many believe, is why some retirees like Korau are yet to be paid. From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail reporting. For Trust TV. The federal government has inaugurated the 66.10 kilometer phase one of the newly reconstructed Gombe Yola Highway project. 
The inauguration ceremony was performed by the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Sa Ali Pantami, in Kumoako, local government area of the state. He said the reconstruction work was awarded in 2014, but couldn't commence until 2015 when technical issues associated with the project were fixed, which allowed the reconstruction and reconstructors to commence work. Pantami added that the project was supposed to have been completed in 2019, but insufficient budgetary provision and release of funds as well as COVID-19 pandemic made it difficult at the stipulated time. The minister urged residents of the state and motorists plying the roads to protect and take ownership of the project. In business news, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the CBN, has disclosed that service charges for merchants using the e naira will be reduced by 50% to attract more transactions on the platform. Deputy Governor of CBN Economics Policies Kingsley Obiora said this during the onboarding of merchants on the platform at the weekend. Obiora said merchants should leverage the opportunities offered by the e naira to improve cash management and make significant savings in operating costs. He said that the platform is infused with opportunities for increasing business income as the availability of the inner payment option on e-commerce merchant platforms such as Remita is expected to complement the existing digital payment system, translating to about a 50% increment in e-commerce transactions and at a lower cost. We'll take a short break. The rest of the news continues when we come back. Do stay with us. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic, and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back. 
And let's move to the foreign scene now. Calls are growing internationally for the release of a Palestinian prisoner, Khalil Awade, as he nears six months of a hunger strike against his continued detention without charge by Israel. Images of an extremely emaciated Awade, shared by his wife on Sunday, a day after she visited the hospital room, have led to growing calls for his release, including from the European Union's delegation to Palestine. The delegation said in a statement released on Twitter that it was shocked by the horrible pictures of our day and said he was in imminent danger of dying. The father of four, our day of 40-year-old father of four daughters was arrested by the Israeli army from his home in Etna in the southern Israeli-occupied West Bank in December 2021 on suspicion of being a Palestinian Islamic Jihad operative. He has been held under Israel's administrative detention. And in sports, the plan of Nigeria's Super Eagles team B to get the positive result in Ghana against the Black Galaxies proved abortive as they suffered defeat in Cape Coast in the first leg of the final rounds of the African Nations Championship on Sunday at Cape Coast Stadium in Ghana. Super Eagles now have a mountain to climb as the Moscow three unreplied goals against the Galaxies of Ghana in Abuja next weekend to have a chance of progressing to the chant competition to be held in Algeria in 2023. And with our story, we've come to the end of news update this hour. For more, do connect with us across all our social media platforms. I am Ntenek Pangwini. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.